Good afternoon, everyone. The next press briefing is about huge help from Estonia for Ukraine and how Estonia helps our servicemen to get rehabilitation. Uh, in Estonia, our guest Anastasia Mikhailova, Project Coordinator on Development, Cooperation and Human Aid, uh, Humanitarian Aid, Estonian Embassy in Kiev. Andrei Siplan, representative of the Estonian Ministry of Defense, uh, Maria Berlinska, the director of the Center for Aerial Reconnaissance, also director of the Project uh, Invisible Battalion, and also Jana Dugar, nurse, and Oksana Grubenka, Colonel of Medical Service. Welcome. Good afternoon. I would like to start and uh, I would like to tell you about the story of help, about the help in rehabilitation and uh, uh, we, we started uh, the second press uh, event. We had the same in December 2017 and we then completed our second uh, first stage and we worked with the participants of ATO, those who were wounded in the east of Ukraine. And these were the wounded who served and those who ended their service in the armed forces of Ukraine. And for the next year, in 2017, we changed the format. We started our work directly with the special brigades. We had cooperation in different issues and we knew whom we sent to Estonia for rehabilitation, and this is our project, the Ministry of Defense of Estonia. They fully covered the expenses for rehabilitation of Ukrainian servicemen, and they spent uh, three weeks, and uh, they were at uh, Selitz uh, Center. Uh, this is near Tallinn, and uh, they have therapy there, and they have opportunity to travel around Estonia to meet with different partners and uh, these can be some uh, servicemen, some hospitals uh, for servicemen. And also we decided that we will cooperate this year with the regiments. We work concerning other issues and we knew who. We worked with the guys and we knew who they are. and. Uh, they, we knew about their wounds, about their injuries, uh, and we worked with the commanders, and for them this is, was a huge help, because for them this was recognition of the achievements and the motivation increased, and they returned home and continued their service. It happened so that and at the end of 2017 we were really impressed by the invisible battalion, and we saw the presentation of this film and I always joke that I do not know how it happened that only in 2017, at the end of the year, we came to the conclusion that uh, not only men participate in war in the East, but also women participate. And uh, the contribution of women remains uh, without attention, and we decided taking into account the policy in Ukraine and in Estonia. And you know that women, they are supported in uh, Estonia armored forces and uh, uh, they are promoted in the defense of the state. So we decided to continue our project in this way. And we know who we send there and uh, where these women serve and uh, what are their achievements are. And our women, the participants of the project, they are doctors who work in uh, frontline bases and they work with, and they uh, carry out medical evacuations. This is really difficult tasks and uh, they face these wounds and deaths and this is a huge load and we should help them to decrease this load and uh, in the course of rehabilitation um, they need this rehabilitation not less than other participants of military actions in 2017-2016 we um, 
uh, to Estonia se uh, to 171 persons and 22 women uh, also came to Estonia and we hope that we will be able to succeed. So the floor is given to Andras. Good afternoon. So, when Soviet Union collapsed, we in Estonia wanted to flee far away from this traumatic past, Soviet past. And we ran really great. And, uh, now there's a generation that grew up during this time. They do not know Russian. They do not speak Russian. They do not know who Lesya Ukrainka or Tarashevchenka are, or what is uh, Dynamo Kiev. They do not know even who Ala Pugacheva is. Uh, so, but this traumatic Soviet past, this is like a ghost that follows us. So we do not want it, but this is our reality. In Tallinn, in 2007, R Russian embassy sent titushkas in the streets. So they just wanted them to make some disturbances. And then there was war in Georgia, then war happened here. So we started this project to help Ukrainian servicemen, and we understood that this not, is not only just medical project, this is a project to morally support you. This is also important for us, because if there is such a situation, so we should make our statement to say what we think and what position we defend in order to identify ourselves. Because if you do not identify yourselves, so someone else will do this. So about one and a half year ago, one Ukrainian serviceman said to me, told me that uh, previously we had uh, brother nations, uh, Ukrainians and Russians, and uh, from now Ukrainians and Estonians, they are brothers. Um, I believe this is a strong statement, but if we look at this situation broader, so we may see that uh, this is not only about traumatic Soviet past, this is much more. If we look at our history, so starting Stone Age, so between our nations, we had deep cooperation. <coughs> and uh, in times of vi Vikings uh, and Varags, uh, this was a way um, that g went through Kiev and uh, then through Estonia, and all archaeological artif artifacts show and prove that we really cooperated a lot. So we left our Soviet past and uh, and. Uh, So we should end one day with this past, but we have uh, our history, and this history is much bigger, and the relations we started in the military sphere, this is not only medical sphere and psychological support, this is also friendship. and. Uh, continuous relationship. Thank you.
During uh, my visit to Estonia, I would like to thank the Minister of Defense of Estonia for this cooperation, for this attention you paid to us. I would like to thank Director of the Center and also the personnel, uh, they took care of us and the President uh, of Estonia visited us. She is a very good woman and she talked to us not on camera and uh, she um, expressed her support to us. It was very cool because uh, in person the President of Estonia talked to us. It was so unprecedented and we didn't expect that. We were uh, very excited to the uh, very depths of our soul. So we are we, we want to uh, come back to, to return to the center and we would like to thank the Minister of Defense of Estonia and we hope for few further cooper cooperation and the females in Ukraine who are medical staff, they are also waiting for this uh, rehabilitation in Estonia. This is opportunity because this is really a very uh, heavy tension when uh, females in Ukraine, uh, they feel, uh, when they are medical staff, they feel uh, all this pain because uh, of those wounded and uh, dead persons they see. Good afternoon. I would like to add that I would like to thank and on the part of those females who are not here today they also want me to tell thank you to you uh, the uh, atmosphere was great uh, we relaxed there uh, by our souls and unfortunately we do not have such a center for uh, service women in Ukraine not only medical staff but also um, uh, we also have uh, other service women there uh, who are responsible for communications, military communications. Thank you very much again, once again, and I hope for our future uh, fruitful cooperation. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Maria Berlinska. I would like to tell you about the project which I am responsible for. This is Invisible Battalion about Ukrainian service women at war. Then I will tell you about my experience of visit and cooperation with Estonia. So the project Invisible Battalion started three years ago. It is a rather well-known project and uh, we have rather much information in the internet and you can uh, look in Wikipedia and see the materials. First it was a photo project, an advocacy campaign, uh, being a service woman myself, a volunteer, I saw the situation of service women at war and uh, I had a hypothesis uh, which uh, was proved by research. Our research that there, uh, they face uh, rather complicated problems uh, for example, the access to some position is closed for them. For example, sniper women uh, were registered as uh, <coughs> cookers, uh, artillery women were registered as uh, cleaning ladies, and this uh, was of influence on their opportunities, career opportunities, career development, getting relevant social benefits. Uh, <coughs> Because when uh, a sewer is uh, wounded, it is hard to explain or to uh, decorate with an order or provide career development opportunities. It was a problem number one. Number two, the problems 
<clears throat> there such as uh, like in uniform, like in medical women's uh, uh, medical care services, where like in and psychological component uh, when a woman comes to the army uh, by default uh, she was treated as a person incapable person so first she had to prove that she is capable so she should have been twice better and for the guys they could demonstrate uh, uh, half of her results so that they are treated the same. So we uh, research into these problems including mental ones and the results of this research became the start of the large scale advocacy campaign. It was not interesting for us just uh, to voice out the result and forget them in the shelf. Uh, so we started our struggle and it resulted in some changes changes. The uh, career opportunities started to be open. 63 positions were open since uh, June 2016. The uh, women can be registered as snipers. Uh, for example, driver's positions or translator positions were not allowed for female. Now they are open. The project Invisible Battalion, battalion uh, uh, addressed the problem uh, in, on a wider scale, uh, also civilian women. Uh, this problem has deep roots, as we got to know when uh, we made research into archaeology of our constitution we saw that article 43 goes in the state forbids uh, uh, female jobs uh, which could be um, uh, hazardous for their health. It seems like care but, uh, about women, but then why do we not care about the health of uh, males? Why we stop women, uh, prevent women's choice? And why we also make women equal to underage persons in this article 43? And <clears throat> we have not uh, uh, ran, uh, run so fast as Estonia from uh, our traumatic uh, past. <clears throat> we only are starting this marathon. So Ukrainian women are working on the hardest uh, uh, jobs and in depressive regions when the uh, when woman comes uh, to work in a, uh, to work in a workshop but the law does not allow direct uh, to uh, register this woman as a worker she is a worker hard worker in a workshop but she is registered as a cleaning lady this is cheating uh, on the part of the state uh, uh, to towards employees because employees are mm, deprived of their benefits, welfare benefits, so invisible battalion address the whole range of uh, problems uh, women face. Uh, the next stage, the follow-up after the advocacy campaign was shooting of a video which we are presenting today in many cities, starting from Washington, ending with uh, Shanghai, from Kramatorsk to the Council of Europe, Brussels, Toronto, Ottawa. Uh, it was in Vilnius already and uh, I hope it would soon be demonstrated in Tallinn. Estonia for me from the last year started more uh, well known. I opened it to me last summer so it is interesting for us to demonstrate this video there. There are six stories of female at war shot by three art directors of those mo uh, videos. Uh, it is a documentary 
and we demonstrated uh, women, the women of various ages, of various backgrounds, uh, how they live at war, how they fight and how they live uh, between the peace and the war. And this uh, video is demonstrated very uh, successfully all over the world. We demonstrated it at the U.S. Parliament uh, lately. <coughs> then we demonstrated it in Canadian Parliament, the Parliament of Canada, uh, Canada's Hall. It was uh, overcrowded, and in the USA there were very few deputies uh, who watched the film, and the Canadian Parliament uh, liked uh, and uh, applauded to our video. I had two visits to Estonia last summer. The first one was very short. The second one was in summer. The first was in summer. The second was uh, very. Uh, I was very impressed. I saw a large part of Estonia from Narva to Tallinn. I saw the border with Russia. I uh, had the chance to communicate with Kalselit Andros Padar. This is the League of Defense uh, of. Uh, People's Defense of Estonia. I was impressed by Estonia. There are very many social ties between people and communities uh, because the country is not big. Uh, and it makes uh, communication between people easier, socializing is easier. This country has transferred to governance uh, very fast uh, and everything is working electronically. There is, uh, the corruption is prevented this way. This is a country with a brilliant investment climate and the country which remembers the Soviet past very uh, well. So it goes quite the other way. It understands the uh, hazards of Russia, it's the dangers of Russia, and is doing uh, and is putting all its efforts uh, to make its citizens ready to what we were not ready in our time. So Estonia uh, shares their skills with us and they uh, are also capable to learn the lessons of other countries. Uh, so they learn the lessons of the country which was not ready for this aggression from our talks with Estonian colleagues. Uh, it was obvious for me, it became obvious for me that uh, they understood Russia is not uh, a peaceful neighbor. Estonian colleagues, they come and see how Ukraine now is making its way out of the situation and the support of Estonia and the opportunity of skill sharing, of uh, proposing some inventions, some methodologies they have uh, developed. This is very valuable for us. The Estonians told that uh, there were proposals to transfer e governance skills uh, to Ukraine, but our uh, government uh, didn't want. Uh, now I got an update that there are some activities in this area now. Yes, uh, we can learn from this country many things, so what else? As for me, I was impressed in person by the nature of Estonia. It is extremely beautiful uh, sea and uh, forests. Uh, and uh, there is a joke in Estonia when I asked about summer, they said, well, this year the weather was very hot and it is very bad that we worked that day. Thank you very much. Now the round of questions and answers. So I have a question to participants of the program about your communication with the representatives of Estonia. What is the principal difference for Estonian women servicemen and Ukrainian women servicemen? 
is the situation different? Do they have positive examples that we can introduce into our legislation in order to improve the situation in Ukraine? We communicated with the instructors in TAPA. This is uh, Peacekeeping Santa. So I do not know about legislation, but they are well prepared. She knows her responsibilities, and our sanitary instructors, they are also great. Legislation, this is not our area of work. We are medical workers. We save lives. This is our responsibility. Our sanitary instructors are also well prepared, and they have even better skills. And then we spoke with one lieutenant, and he said uh, that he knows something only theoretically. And our girls, they practiced all these things. So our girls who are in the, who serve in the joint forces, they are well prepared, and uh, they carried out operations. and. Uh, of course, we always need experience of servicemen of Estonia. They have good barracks, more than ones. So we also want such facilities. This is my wish. Of course, I spoke with the girls, uh, servicemen, female servicemen. Uh, so the League of Defense of Estonia, there are girls and boys, and uh, this is people's defense, readiness of each citizen to possible military actions. And also inside the structure. Uh, so they said that there is no limits for girls. Uh, Girls can serve, they can get military education, and they can build their military career. So professionalism is the basis for everything. And this is the main idea of Invisible Battalion. We need professionalism. And Estonia is a NATO country, and they introduce NATO standards, and they have proper gender policy. So also question to Maria, oh, to Mr. Siplane, about the percentage of women among servicemen and uh, also a female servicemen in the territorial defense. What is the percentage? In Kaslita, roughly speaking, there are 15,000 men and 5,000 women. 15,000 men and 5,000 women. And in the armed forces, 10% are women. We are a small country. About 3,000 uh, contract <coughs> servicemen and 3,000 conscripts. And among conscripts, there are less girls about 30 a year, and we want to increase this number. So we have a plan, first 30 girls, and this year they had, we will have 108 girls a year, and among contract servicemen, 330, this is 10 percent. Thank you. Do you have other questions? Please ask. If there are no, thank you. We thank Estonia for this great support in these difficult times. If you have final remarks, please. So I would like to say about uh, the female veterans travel. Uh, Estonia has uh, good experience 
and uh, our project is the way of cooperation between the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine and Ministry of Defense of uh, um, Estonia. And uh, we are sure 100 percent that uh, there is a lot of work in the sphere of rehabilitation. And we w worked with our partners, and they say that uh, treatment it has uh, some limits, but rehabilitation goes on throughout the life because a person coming from war, it brings a so-called souvenir in the negative sense. Some takes more, some takes less, but through rehabilitation they can get rid of these negative remnants. And it would be great if other partners also join and Ukraine uh, has many friends, uh, uh, not only Estonia, and by joint efforts uh, we will be able to help and to resolve uh, these problems that Ukraine faces. So we would like to thank all the partners, all the fr friends, and uh, these are not only partners, these are friends, all those people who help to implement our project and to send uh, our wonderful girls last year, these were the guys, so to send them for rehabilitation and we hope that there will be more new projects with other countries. So if there are no other questions, we end our press briefing. Thank you.